Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz on 1230 WBZT. First, don't forget LibertyMastermind.us. Okay, we're having the Liberty Mastermind Symposium again. It's going to take place in, in that place of that moral desert called Las Vegas at the Embassy Suites Hotel, February 21st, 22nd. The theme is The Clock is Ticking, Countdown to Collapse. You know it's coming. One day you're going to wake up. And the price of gold, the price of silver, there's going to be a couple of zeros added on to them. I'm not making this up. I'm no genius. But you know it's coming. It's going to happen. So go over to libertymastermind.us. There's a special bonus for people who sign up now. Listen to the, uh, the group of headliners we're having Turd Ferguson, one of my favorites. Uh, Brett is in the process of lining him up for an interview now. Jeff Berwick, Robert Ian, me, of course. Tacoa De Silva, you know him. He's amazing. Mickey Fulp, Alan Butler, Andy Hoffman, Bix Weir, Daniel Amaduri, Gary Christensen, uh, Elijah Johnson, Gregory Manorino, you know him. He's a YouTube sensation. David Morgan's coming back. If you're into Bitcoin, Trace Mayer. I mean, it's an amazing lineup of people. And we've got a couple other people. Chris Dwayne probably is going to make it. But look, you're just not going to find the caliber of people. And you're not going to find this kind of show. Robert Ian, professional speaker. He's been, he's been putting on these types of shows his whole life. And he's a master at putting these things together and I'm not so bad myself but I really defer to Robert in these things Robert lives in Vegas as good as the show in Dallas was this one is going to be that much better go over there sign up now limited seating and we're expecting a lot more people to come so get over there so theme of this episode it's Triple Lutz Report it's episode 324 I can't even believe I've been on this long. I can't even believe you're still listening to me, but uh, but you are, and I'm still talking. I thought I would have run out of things to say a lot long, a lot longer ago, but but I'm still talking. And uh, hey, it's amazing. This guy Bill De Blasio, I know of him, a disciple of Mayor David Dinkins, who single-handedly nearly destroyed the city. John Lindsay, part two. Think of him as Barack Obama, as mayor of New York City. If, uh, if Barack Obama had a father, if he could figure out who that guy was, it would be David Dinkins. And so de Blasio, FCB. Uh, you can use your imagination for what the F stands for. The C is for commie. The B is for bastard. And de Blasio is a commie, redistributionist, and, you know, typical one of these guys who never had a real job in his life, vacationed, uh, honeymooned in Cuba for his, uh, for his marriage, and he's got a credibility problem. He met with a bunch of uh, New York's billionaires, real estate developers, and said, I'm not a free market guy. And I'm all about uh, helping the little guy, which is fine. But the way you help the little guy is to teach him how to fish, not to uh, give him the fish because that just destroys his initiative. So de Blasio wants to tax the rich to help them have universal pre-K, which has proven a failure, doesn't do any good. Head Start, a failure, a program that we just continue to shovel billions of dollars a year at doesn't do the poor kids any good because once they get into real school they fail but guys like de blasio never let a little thing like performance like real world facts get in their way so he knows that the one thing that will sink his administration faster than anything 
is crime, escalating crime. That's what killed Dinkins, 2,200 murders. Now they're down to the mid-400s. You know, in 2012, there were 418 murders. Uh, as of September 25th of 2013, there were 240 murders, um, you know, which was down from 327 murders in, two, in 2012. It just seems like New York is just a city filled with love for your fellow man. And Commissioner Ray Kelly, who was actually... Uh, had served twice as police commissioner. He said he hated de Blasio, that he was a backstabber. And there's this whole controversial stop and frisk policy. But meantime, so de Blasio knows that if crime starts going up and especially the murder rate, he's cooked. He'll never get reelected. So what does he do? He had been consulting with uh, William Bratton, who was the genius behind Comstat and many of the innovative strategies that brought down the crime rate in New York uh, for a lot of the time while I was there when Mayor Rudolph Giuliani got elected way back in the 90s. And I was in New York City when Koch was there and Dinkins was there. And prior to Giuliani, the belief was that crime was intractable, that there was nothing that could be done because of the societal problems and pretty much that you just had to accept that crime was going to keep going up and up because it's society's fault. And there were no enforcement strategies, no legal strategies that could be conducted. Pretty much crime was intractable and it would just keep going up. And nothing like enforcement and expecting minimal codes of public behavior would have any impact on it whatsoever. This was the liberal uh, orthodoxy. This was their theology. And until we eliminated poverty, which meant just upping food stamps, upping welfare payments, crime wouldn't go down. So they get this guy Bratton from Boston, from Baston. He has this really intense Baston accent but we won't hold that against him, and he probably likes the Red Sox. And you know, Boston sports fans are the, just the most, some of the most obnoxious people in the world. If you're listening from Boston, I'm sure you're not obnoxious, but you know how drunken and over the top some of you people out there from Boston can get. And Jeff, if you're listening, I'm not referring to you, but Boston sports fans can just be really hideous people. Not all of you. Some of you are grown-ups. But anyway, Bratton had been the police commissioner of Boston, and he was formulating his theories and kind of maturing as a leader at that time. So he, he gets to be head of the New York City Transit Police, which at the time New York City had three separate police forces, the Transit Police, the Housing Police, and the Regular Police. And I'll never forget... Um, I saw this with my own eyes. Guy comes up out of the uh, out of the subway and he's bleeding from his head. And he pulls a police guy, policeman over, who is a regular New York City policeman, and said, "I just got mugged down in the subway." And the cop says to him, "Well, that's not my jurisdiction. Go find a transit cop." And for years, Koch had tried to do it. Every mayor had tried to unify the three police forces. Well, Bratton had become commissioner of the transit police, and there were like 8,000, I think, or 9,000 transit cops. And the first thing he did was change their uniforms around to make them more comfortable. He jacked up the police radio force uh, signal in the subways because there were all sorts of dead zones there, which was very dangerous to the cops there. And he did a whole bunch of stuff to build their morale. He gave them 9 millimeter handguns, mind you, with a 20-pound pull on the trigger. Not the most advantageous way, but he really boosted their morale. And then he, he set up, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, posts 
at the turnstiles to capture turnstile jumpers because he figured that people who were committing crime on the subways probably weren't paying the fare. And they would capture hundreds of people jumping turnstiles. And I have to admit, when I was a kid, sometimes I would do it myself. One time a cop caught me doing it and said, why didn't you pay the fare? And I said, because the fare is too high. And he goes, what are you talking about? And he said, go back and pay the fare. And I have to admit, from that point on, I never did it. Because I just felt like, hey, you could get away with it. So he set up all these turnstile jumping, fare jumper uh, roadblocks and stuff. And, you know, he really, really cracked down on crime. And an amazing thing happened. Crime dove by about two thirds or three quarters on the subway. And he was on to something. And then he moved on. I think, uh, I don't remember if he went to Philly or what happened um, when Dinkins became mayor. Or maybe he was still there. I'm not exactly sure of the chronology of events, but. Rudolph Giuliani gets elected mayor. Tell you a funny story. So Dinkins, Dinkins is mayor at Crown Heights. Murders jump to 2,200, and people are just totally have had it. New York City is becoming a cesspool. The squeegee guys, those are guys that uh, camp out on the corner. Um, they're just out of control. I remember one time a drunken crazed squeegee guy kicked the door of my car and I mean I got out and I was ready to kill the guy and then I said you know I could slam this guy but there's nothing that this guy has never experienced or had done to him I'm just not going to do it I just let him go he was so pathetic but that really I just wanted to get out of the city and be as far away as I could and then the Giuliani years started, and it was a renaissance. We're going to talk more about it up next on the Financial Survival Network.com, 1230 WBZT. This is a Triple Lutz report. Hi, it's Kerry Lutz. I recently decided to move my retirement account into physical precious metals to hedge against the coming times. If you want to move an existing retirement account into physical precious metals that you can hold in your hand tax-free, there's no company that can do it more quickly and efficiently than Regal Assets. It took them just 24 hours to open my new IRA account, and all I had to do was fill out one simple form. The best part is that Regal Assets does all the work for you. They cover the setup and administrative costs for 2013. If you're interested in making the same move I did, call 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620. That's 855-678-6620 or visit them at regalassets.com. You'll be glad you did and tell them Carrie sent you. We're back on the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz, Triple Lutz Report 324. So, and it's WBZT 1230. So, we're talking about the Giuliani years, and it was amazing. Giuliani gets elected on a law and order platform. The liberal naysayers, progressives, collectivists say, no, you can't do anything about crime because everybody has rights and. You can't send him to jail. And around the same time, Pataki had been elected as governor. And I don't think much of the guy, but he was in favor of upping sentences for violent criminals. Imagine that, that the thought that if a violent criminal's in jail, at the very least, you might not reform the guy. You might not rehabilitate him, but at least while he's in jail, he isn't committing more violent crimes, right? Interesting thought there. And believe me, I'm in favor of, as a libertarian, of, of just liberal, legalizing all drugs. Let's just make sure they don't get in the hands of kids. But for adults, if you want to do drugs, whatever you want to do, just do them because prohibitions don't work. Right? We all know that. And same thing with the prohibitions against guns. Like, you know, I'm a huge supporter of the Second Amendment. There's a reason why it came number two. It protects all the other amendments. And shout out to, to James Yeager out there, too. So Giuliani comes on board, 
And even before he was installed, uh, his inauguration took place, the cops, there was a dramatic turnaround in their attitude. They started chasing down these squeegee guys before Giuliani comes about. And Giuliani picks William Bratton to be his commissioner. And Giuliani takes all these other guys. Um, you know, he has a brilliant eye for talent, for executive talent. He brings in this guy, Timoney, to be the chief of, uh, of the force. He brings in uh, Aminone and Maples, who I think subsequently passed around, passed on rather, and they come up with this thing called CompStat. And CompStat is every crime that takes place in the city goes into a computer and they map it. And they start seeing trends of like, okay, here there's a bunch of murders. We got to have added police presence. Well, then nothing is happening in the Upper East Side. We can take some cops away from there, but we got to monitor it because if we start seeing crimes happen there, and, oh, there's a lot of armed robberies in this area. Let's put cops over there. And magically, almost overnight, the crime rate starts to drop, like heavily. I mean, it really starts to go down rapidly. And that crime rate starts, it starts a multi-generational drop in crime. Now, you could say that they were cheating on the stats, and there's two crimes that you can't really cheat on. Murder, because unless you just don't report them, all right, uh, or they all become suicides, yeah, okay. And the other one is auto theft, because most of them get reported to the insurance companies, and you just can't lie about those two crimes. So you see murders go down, and as we said, um, in New York City last year, we had uh, 418 murders in 2012. And as of September 25th, 240 murders compared to 327 murders the same time in 2012. So Bratton has a huge ego. He would We'd see him in Elaine's, which was an Upper East Side eatery. I think it's still around. Elaine was like a legend. Woody Allen used to play his saxophone there every couple of weeks and he'd be holding court there and you know like the city just wasn't big enough for Giuliani and for Bratton but he lasted like a year and a half or two years and he put all these programs into place and Giuliani just didn't like Bratton getting all the credit and unfortunately Giuliani canned him and Bratton went on though he didn't just rest on his laurels he went on to go out to L.A., which had a whole different assortment of problems. L.A. is like the gang capital of the U.S. And he went, and from the year before he started to the year after he left, he was there for seven years in L.A., and he brought crime down 54% in L.A. And in the meantime, he left... Uh, the fire commissioner, this guy Howard Safer, went on to become uh, commissioner, police commissioner in New York, and the he kept Bratton's policies, improved upon some, crime kept going down. And the liberals had a real problem. They had to say, oh, it's demographics. We have less younger criminals, and they're the ones committing crimes. And the amazing thing is, police departments commissioners, politicians from all over the world came to New York City to see how are these guys doing it? And they started copying many of the techniques used and amazing things happen. Everywhere Bratton's programs were used, implemented, what happened? Crime went down. So we get back to the current thing. De Blasio has a problem because he's an FCB a redistributionist, but the one thing he knows that will get him run out of New York City on a rail is if crime starts going up. And you got this stop and frisk, which is like, if you see a guy with his pants falling down his butt 
and you see a bulge coming out of his uh, waist, you know, the cops want to stop and frisk the guy. They don't just pick people indiscriminately. Body language has been affirmed by the Supreme Court as a perfectly valid reason for stopping and frisking a potential criminal. It's perfectly permissible. They don't just single out African Americans normally to be stopped and frisked. Okay, that's not the way this happens. And yet, if you listen to the media, you listen to this de Blasio character, that is what's happening in New York City today. And not true. Totally not true. That's what I want you to understand. And, you know, this is going on in New York. And so he had to do something. So he picks William Bratton. It's a brilliant, inspired political choice. We'll see if New York is big enough for Bratton and for de Blasio. I think that uh, Bratton's learned a little something since the Giuliani years. I think that de Blasio has to keep him there at all costs. And I think that this Bratton is a genius. You know, when it comes to figuring out techniques for lowering the crime rate, you know, this guy knows it. Now, one thing that has happened in New York City since since uh, Ray Kelly took over and since the Bloomberg years is they've been lying about the crime statistics. They've been deliberately downgrading crimes from felonies to misdemeanors. I don't think they've been lying about the murder rate, but it's very possible there's been an upsurge in suicides. Um, but, you know, there was a study done a while back and two, two out of three cops have said that they've deliberately downgraded armed robberies to assaults and aggravated assaults to simple assaults. So I hope that, that uh, Commissioner Bratton's first order of business will be to upgrade the integrity of the statistics and to explain to the public that certain crimes have been misreported and that they're now going to be accurately reported Because, you know, the public has to have confidence in the department's reporting mechanism. And I think that's diminished over time. But it certainly is a confidence builder bringing bringing William Bratton back. And the guy's colorful. I mean, to give you an idea, the guy was not unusual. I think he lived around Lincoln Center. And on his way to work, He'd witness a crime taking place, an armed robbery. He'd have a couple of bodyguards, but, you know, he'd go rushing in there himself without a bulletproof vest and break up an armed robbery, cuff the guy, and bring him into the police station, wherever it was, and book the guy himself. I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. He was, you know, there were myths about the guy. He's a legend in the NYPD, and the LAPD, and, you know, he can deal with people. You know, he went to L.A., and they had this skid row downtown that you never saw anything like. Like, New York had its Bowery, where you'd have maybe a couple dozen drunks, winos, as we call them, totally politically incorrect, hanging out. L.A.'s skid row downtown had thousands of these people hanging out, hundreds maybe a couple thousand, and he had to get him out to rehabilitate downtown, and he had lawsuit after lawsuit. These California liberals just don't understand what what this type of uh, decadence does to a community. It just eats the heart out, having these people sleeping, dealing sex, drugs on the street, And he had to deal, that was his biggest impediment to cleaning up downtown L.A. And yet, you know what? The guy did it. And, you know, dealing with the gangs, the guy was just a genius. It's not just New York City. New York City, in a way, was easier to deal with than any other city's crime because a lot of it just had to do with an antiquated department and 
just outmoded methods that it was run by. But in L.A., you know, L.A. is a whole different animal. It's so spread out, these gangs that run places, and yet the guy can adapt his game, his plan. It's going to be great to see him come back to New York. Now he's 20 years older, and what's he going to do now? Even Giuliani, once arch enemies with Bratton, is is really excited about his return. So am I. And, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not excited about FCB de Blasio being the mayor, but look, New York is a cesspit of socialism, of collectivism, of communism. I mean, these people think that other people's money grows on trees. It's going to go bankrupt. De Blasio will help it go along the way, but hopefully a guy like Bratton will help it not devolve into anarchy when when that day arrives. So think about it. Don't forget libertymastermind.us. I want you to be there. Want to see you there because remember the clock is ticking. We're entering the final countdown to collapse. Looking forward to seeing you there. This is Kerry Lutz. Been another Triple Lutz Report signing off. What happens if the collapse never really comes? You need income, and Jason Hartman can help you get it. He's helped thousands of people realize their dreams of financial independence through real estate investing, and now he's got an unbeatable offer for you. He's offering my ebook, Forget Wall Street, Go for the Gold and Silver 2, for free. Just visit jasonhartman.com slash Lutz. The first 100 Financial Survival Network listeners will get the book free. Remember, you can't afford to put all your eggs in one basket. Real estate should be part of a balanced investment portfolio along with gold and silver. Just go to jasonhartman.com slash Lutz and sign up today. When it comes to real estate investing, Jason Hartman is the only person we trust on the Financial Survival Network. So make your money work as hard as you do by building an income property empire. Real estate is America's proven investment. Go to www.jasonhartman.com slash Lutz and get your free ebook today. That's Jason, H-A-A-R-T-M-A-N dot com slash Lutz. That's Jason, H-A-R-T-M-A-N dot com slash Lutz. Jason knows how to help you retire with a portfolio of income producing property. Go to jasonhartman.com slash Lutz. The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at financialsurvivalnetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network.